Welcome back to Hendo's Hot Topics, the podcast to distract your mind. Real people and their stories, raw and uncut. Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Hendo's Hot Topics. Hope you're doing well, hope you're loving yourself, and of course, I hope you're having an amazing day. Now we've missed uh, Robert Roundy Dunn. How's it going, mate? Yeah, good, mate. As uh, sorry, I've been a little bit elusive, and it's taken no, me a wee right. while to, to get in the chair, but uh, happy to be here now, and, and looking forward to it, man. Cool, mate. I've been uh, very excited to pick your brains a bit and have a chat with you, so it's good to have you here. Now, I'd love to start off every episode, mate, with uh, asking a real honest question of how you doing in general, how's life? Mate, it's pretty good, like... Um, you know, I think probably something I've, I've tried really hard in the last sort of year or two is to practice a bit of gratitude. And, mm-hmm. and like, while well, life's pretty quick, and you know, I've got three kids and a lovely wife, and and you know, works all go, and, and there's a number of other things I do which I'm, I'm a willing participant in that I've signed myself up to, and I'm, I'm keen to do. Um, sometimes the weeks go pretty quick, and and um, you know, I try to make sure every now and again just take a breath and appreciate that you know, actually life is pretty good, and I, I feel really lucky to have. Um, three healthy kids, a beautiful wife, and I take their cricket team and their rugby team, and and you know um, they're all going really really well, and and um, you know we're, I'm fortunate to live in the Bay of Plenty and come to Auckland when I need to for work, and and um, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty lucky, you know, like um, you know I'm busy, but but who isn't to be honest? Mm. And and every time there's a a gap in the schedule, I seem to find a way to fill it. So I think part of that is I you know I normally fill it with things I enjoy doing. Um, you know, but I, I think it's always important just to, you know, reflect a little bit and say, you know, geez, you know, we can moan about the weather and, and you know, we can moan about all sorts of things. and, and um, But actually, you know, I'm very fortunate, I think, myself to, to be pretty lucky and, and being a job I love doing as well. You love that, mate. Now, how do you find that balance in your life? Because it is quite easy, like you said, you know, to put your name out there to many things and get caught up in it all and actually forget to give time for yourself or t- time for those loved ones. Yeah, totally, mate. Like, it's, I think, you know, anyone who tells you that they've nailed it is lying. You know, like, it's a constant battle. You just keep chipping away, and sometimes you've got it absolutely in the right spot, and, and then a month later, kind of, you know, one plate's crashed, and another one's two more have been added, and, and you sort of get the balance out of sync a little bit. So I think it's just constantly working at it, and and what works for you might be a bit different to what works for me, but, um, you know, being organised and having good comms with the family and the missus is really, really important. And, and the thing, too, around... You know, when you say making sure um, that there's things in there that are good for me, well, actually, you know, I'm pretty fortunate sometimes that those things double up a little bit. Like, mm. I love taking my kids' cricket team. I love taking their footy team. Um, you know, these things that we do together that I consider that, you know, um, the things in my calendar that fill my bucket a wee bit and the things that I really enjoy. And, and you know, um, and that probably goes across to a bit of exercise as well. So... You know, I'm not someone who needs an hour of, of nothing going on. I need to sit down and reflect and all that sort of stuff. I like to be busy, but but also try and do it in a way where I'm doing things, you know, it's doing things for my kids and their mates and then their mates' parents. And, you know, everyone goes, oh, thanks so much for giving your time. I love it. You know, yeah, like yeah. I'm, I'm happy day. So it's, it's ticking all sorts of boxes in the sense that it's something I really enjoy doing um, and make it part of my life. But but you're right, mate. Like I am a bit of a yes man and... and um, you know, sometimes that plays the ego. You love to be seen as someone who can, you know, people think, oh, you'd be good at this and you can help out and all that sort of stuff. And, and you know, I'm like anyone else, you know. Um, you know, stroke my ego is probably a long way to get you a long way to me to saying yes to something. But I think you just, it's constantly, you know, looking at what you're committed to and, and just trying to make sure you get the balance right. But, yeah, as I said, mate, I'm, I don't, you know, I might work for Movember and I might, I might talk about this stuff a lot with yourself and others, but it doesn't mean I get it right, you know. Yeah, like, you yeah. just yep. constantly... Revisiting it, you know. Yeah, cool, mate. Now you just mentioned it there, November. You know, we've we've actually just gone through the old November a couple of months ago with the the Mo Bros and Mo Sisters. Now you have shared your story of how you got into it. You know, you're in, you're in London for OE and you saw it was big in Aussie. Um, I w- I'd love for you to share it again if you could for those back at home. You know how you got in the position you are now for such a such a I'd like to say favourite and well renowned movement in in the country now. Yeah, man. Yeah, look, I was, God, it's like so many things in life. Like, yeah, um, you know, it certainly was a non traditional way to get into what my current job is. And, and, you know, I was like any good young Kiwi, you know, pre COVID, a long time pre COVID at, at my age. But, um, you know, I was just enjoying myself. I was traveling overseas. I was having a great time with mates. You know, I didn't have really, even though I probably thought I was busy, I didn't have a care in the world, really. You know, like I was just overseas having a good time and just happened to meet the guys, the Australian guys who started it. And, and, 
you know, it was starting to get sort of organically a bit of support in the UK and, and they came over to the UK and just um, wanted to get it going there. And we're talking, this is early days, really yep. grassroots, really volunteer, just everyone pitching in their time. And, and I didn't um, I didn't support the organisation then because I was, you know, particularly driven by the cause or anything like that. It was just, um, this sounds really cool. You know, men's health was just, it wasn't a thing. There's just absolutely no formalised organisation supporting men. So I thought, well, this is a heap of fun. This is, um, you know, while I'm having a lot of fun, I can support a great cause, mm-hmm. you know, and all I really did was was really the, the expat community that was living in London and and actually sort of, you know, even though I probably didn't really realise realize it at the time, the penny dropped a little bit around, you know, that I really enjoyed providing platforms and settings and occasions and events um, that were predominantly fun as a Trojan horse, you know, that were just good fun, everyone getting together, enjoying each other's company, but actually you can slip those messages, those men's health messages and and um, interventions sort of through the back door for blokes. And, and yep. that was kind of sort of the early iterations of that, and, and um, albeit I didn't know it at the time, and, and you know, then Movember continued to grow throughout the world and in New Zealand, and, and later on the boys asked me if I'd like to come into a more formal role of looking after Movember New Zealand. I was still travelling a little bit, so it took a wee while to for the stars to align, but but a couple of years later they did, and, and I um, started running Movember New Zealand, and, and that's sort of the short version, but, um, you know, I, I it's sort of that, that th- so often that story, it probably uh, my best I don't know strength is just mm. always been uh, I just know a lot of people I have a good network of people just because I'm social and I love to go out and about and do different things and be involved in different settings and and that perhaps created some opportunities for me so um, and one I've, I've really enjoyed and and have become extremely passionate about over the last sort of 10 or 11 years Movember New Zealand is, is its own thing but you know I, I I'm it feels like my thing sometimes, yeah, but it, but yeah, it absolutely right. isn't. You know, it's it's really is. It's the result of in any given year, you know, ten or eleven or twelve thousand people growing a moustache and supporting Movember and and sort of creating this this big community of people um, in any given year. So I, I just feel it's awesome to kind of try and be the person that kind of um, facilitates all that and drives mm. that group of people and and hopes that most of the time they're out there having a good time, um, but also. You know, thinking about their health, thinking about their their mates' health and and colleagues and anyone else they're kicking around with. Yeah, yeah. Now, is your personal life, mate? Is there something that's happened with you personally that g- g- gives you that that push and drive to keep on pushing it out and, and pushing out those those key messages and tools, especially with men's mental health? Like, what is it that keeps your fire burning? Yeah, man. I I you know I like unlike a lot of people who support my vendor, I don't have a massive personal story or yep. incidents or a family member or a friend or whatever it may be um, that sort of has driven me into this role or drives me every day. Um, there, there's, you know, certainly, you know, unfortunately, as you know and as we all know really, you know, you're never too far away from some sort of men's health issue, you know, whether it be men's cancers or male mental health and suicide. Um, but probably actually where um, I've taken real motivation uh, in my role and maybe what's kept me in the role for a long time is I, I, I say this before when I first started with Movember uh, you know 10 or 11 or 12 years ago whatever it was you know, I wasn't a hundred percent sure that the Movember campaign that we ran and the moustaches grown and the conversations we were encouraging people to have how much of a difference that really made mm-hmm. I wasn't sure um, where I thought the real value in what we did was the programs that we funded because we uh, were the, basically the only organisation at the time looking at things from a gendered lens, like looking at things for men. You know, there was any number of initiatives out there for females and for children and for famine and for things for Africa and all different sorts of initiatives, all great initiatives. There's actually really nothing focused for men, you know, and there's, there's all sorts of reasons why that was. So I thought the fact that we were in there having a crack and trying to do things specifically for men with a gendered lens... Um, was pretty cool, and and I still think that, but actually after being involved with Movember, you know, year after year after year, and just mm. slowly over time meeting more and more people, people like yourself, people, um, you know, common people that we know together, and all sorts of other people, and they, over time, get to know you, trust you, understand what Movember's all about, and they share their story or their story of others. Um, the campaign itself and the conversations had and behaviours changed in the course of Movember over the years is the best programme we run by 100 million miles, you know, like, and that's, um, that is just, 
um, time and time again people sharing their story and the effect it's had on them. So it took a wee while for that, um, you know, f- for me to really be motivated by that and really realise that that was a way. And like you, you know, I am sick of moustaches come to see the man, you know, like 100% sick of them. Um, and you, you just so need the to... missus. Totally, yeah, missus sick of them all. She's sick of them all year. But there's... Um, but the the point being, you know, of, of course, like it's it's all encompassing there for a wee while, and come December and, and January and stuff, I just need a break. I need yep. to chill out a little bit and and stuff. But then, you know, you pick yourself up off the ground again, and it's because of you know the it's quite a big thing for you'll know this. It, it's quite a a big thing for people to share their story or their motivation or confide in you or or um, you know for you to be a trusted person. Mm. Like it's it's. You know, I'm pretty happy-go-lucky fella, and when I'm out and about, you know, love a joke and and stuff, and love a yarn and and all the hard case things in life, like a lot of blokes do. So when someone steps into a space and is prepared to share something um, a bit emotional or or something that, um, you know, is can be quite confront conf- confronting for them, it comes with a bit of responsibility, you know. Like yeah. you sort of like, wow, that's pretty cool. And so um, for Movember to be the platform for people to be able to do that is quite motivating in itself. So that's probably what's been able to to keep me going year after year. And then there's you know all the different things you fund and, and all the different organisations you get to and individuals you get to have a relationship with is pretty cool. So yeah, well I think the cool thing is, especially from a young bloke looking onto it, is when November comes around, it becomes a safe space for you know blokes and females. But even for those who you know can't grow a bushy mo or whatever it may be, they're finding their own ways. To still push that message and fundraise the money, to, you know, for the good, which is really cool to see because you see a lot of, um, you see a lot of movements or, or foundations or fundraisers, and everyone follows the the rules, the steps by steps. Yeah. But everyone still finds their way to come together and push the same messages and just have a good time. But like I said at the start, it's a safe space. Totally, mate. I, I think too. Um, over time, as we've matured, it's really grown into that, and and. I get a little bit frustrated sometimes when a lot of the stuff that gets coverage in the media or, or just um, dominates conversation is around all the bad stuff, you know, around mm. suicide statistics or the latest story we've heard about someone who tragically might have taken their own life or we've lost someone to cancer. Um, we hear about, you know, the you know, the health system being overrun and, and we can't help anyone. And lo- lo- elements of that are true and, and there's there certainly is room to talk about that sort of stuff but but what frustrates me a little bit is underneath all that and maybe you see a bit of this there is a whole lot of good stuff going on like heaps and heaps and heaps of good stuff whether it be formal interventions that are out there trying to help people in their community whether it's just good soldiers out there trying to help their mates and others whether it's you know podcasts like this whether it's there's just a whole bunch of people out there having a crack so that's that's really motivating and at different times that stuff doesn't come to the surface unfortunately that stuff's not talked about enough it's it's all the bad stuff that goes to the top of the tree and you know people always say to me oh it's so good you you guys you know fund mental health initiatives and suicide initiatives now well it's all we always have I mean, as yeah. long as I've worked in Movember we always have it's just um, in terms of acknowledgement of as an issue um, and the ability to want to do something about it has significantly changed so like how good's that like that, yeah. that's a great thing isn't it you yeah. know and and like you say now if you want to Use the moustache during the month of November as an opportunity to talk about mental health, whether it's you want to help your mate, help yourself, and um, whether you want to learn more about it, whether you're going through a few troubles yourself and you want to try to figure out how to get through it. Well, that's amazing that Movember can be the month and the opportunity to do that. And in many, many, many cases, as you're pointing out, there's no judgment and, and actually the stigma has been broken down around doing that, whereas opposed to perhaps you know when I was a teenager or, or even a younger bloke, perhaps that wasn't there and I'd be a lot more apprehensive about talking about that sort of stuff. 100% mate and it seems like a long time ago now but in, back in 2019 before the world changed uh, you were asked the question of do you think the way people perceive, uh, perceive masculinity is changing in which you answered the definition of masculinity uh, used to be a farming all black along those lines. So when you get people who are perceived as staunch like John Kerwin or Mike King starting to be brave and acknowledge the issue and put their hand up and do something about it that's super powerful. Now, considering how much times have changed since 2019 and every, everything that everyone's gone through, you know, do you do you still stand by that comment? Is there anything you want to add on to it in terms of you you seeing the way that masculinity has been perceived or changed or affected? Yeah, look, I think um, I think that comment still stands, mm. and and I think that you know we're receiving 
even more advocates above John Kerwin and, and Mike King and stuff, which is fantastic. And guys like Matt Chisholm, who I do a lot of work with, um, you know, he's out there also, um, you know, I think doing some amazing work in the male mental health space in the rural community. So I think I think we are moving on from that. Probably what, like so many things with COVID, what happened, actually, while it was hugely challenging, you know, like the fact we became, you know, um, quite disconnected from all the different environments we really like being in and that's a huge challenge and, and one that we're actually still struggling to um, handle at the moment uh, health was became at the forefront of everyone's mind like even every single you know business and community and, and whatever it may be um, wanted to make sure they're looking after their people during a really t- a really tough time yep. well that's that's a great thing, you know, like um, the key now is is to take the best stuff out of that, like what really worked, what genuinely worked for our people um, and maybe the stuff that didn't get rid of it because, you know, now we have, we live in an environment where, you know, people are pe- perhaps not going back into the workplace as much as they did, they're not congregating as much as they used to, they're not having those water cooler conversations like they used to in between their work conversations and sometimes that's a bit unhealthy and we use our, we're losing our ability to connect with people so there's the downside of it as well where you know actually it's awesome giving someone flexibility so they can drop the kids at work and don't necessarily have to be in the office you know eight or six every day um, but also there's that human interaction that they're missing out on and and so you know we've almost in some regards like it was, it was a good thing you know because it put you know health and looking out for your mates and your colleagues and your friends at the forefront of life you know more so than work yep. um, but also there's been some habits created that perhaps um are not unhealthy, but they're just, um, you know, we didn't realise that actually they were things that were really, really good for us, they actually were tools um, that we were able to utilise organically and, and now they're not there as much as they used to be. So, and that's not just in workplaces for men, that's, that's schools and boys' schools and, and all that sort of stuff and, and some people are struggling to get back on the horse, but that's the challenge and, and um, you know, in many cases we're aware of it, so, so there's people trying to do good things around that. Yeah, I think the most interesting thing coming on the back front of it now is you know, I'd be, I'm asked the question a lot is how do you stay motivated? I think that was the hardest challenge during that, that, that time was staying motivated oh, because yeah. of the uncertainty, you know, 100%. of do I put all my time and effort into this because I don't even know if it's going to last for a month or two months. So yeah, yeah, now yeah. you see everyone jumping around, trying different things, new things, trying to find that motivation back in themselves. You said at the start, you know, what you're trying to really focus on now is gratitude. You know, when you get some time reflecting on your day, reflecting on what's going around you, what does that look like for you? Because it, it, a lot of people, I know they try and they find out it's easier said than done. Yeah, so totally. when you reflect on your day, what, what does that look, look like for you? Totally, mate. And I think it's um, what works for me might not work for you, but like, um, you know, there's always there's always something on the horizon. Mm. Like there's always something you're trying to work towards and like, you know, and then you achieve something and there's something else on the horizon you're always working towards. So like it can be big things, like 100%. Like um, if you achieve something in life that, you know, it might be a new job, it might be um, a relationship thing, it might be a financial thing, or, you know, hundred, go out for dinner, like, you know, like get the babysitter, like um, at my age, mate, like get the babysitter in and go go out for dinner. And we don't, well, I'm not even that great at that, you know, like I'm, I'm still going to work on stuff like that. But I think probably the, the, the place where I've tried to do it the most um, is just um, more the little things. So mm. like, um, you know, understanding that, you know, being along with all my kids, you know, every sad day taking their little cricket team and taking their little rugby team is awesome, you know. Um, Realising they've got a wonderful set of mates. I've got a really cool little group of mates and like not not every little kid has that and not every little kid has great relationships growing up, you know, with two parents and, and a really good group of friends around them. So I just appreciate that a little bit. Yep. Um, you know, understanding, you know, I've got a fantastic wife who's really supportive and lets me do um, you know, a lot of things that I want to do. Um, so it's just little moments like that. For me, it's, it's, I'm a, a, a writer downer. You know, I've tried like, um, digital things, mm. um, cause there's so many digital things out there. I don't know whether, why they don't take for me. I, I don't know, mate. I'm not sure. Um, other people might have, con- you know, a view on that, but I, I, I'm a writer downer. I, it's even the things that need to be done in any given day, um, get written down and the things that I'm grateful for get written down. Um, so, so that's kind of what it looks like for me, but it is a said, mate, um, it's just a constant work on, and, and there's times when I don't get it right, like a month goes past and I've just let the, the hustle and bustle of life um, get on top of me, and, and, and I, I actually realise, oh, I'm constantly thinking about this thing, this thing down the line, and it's like, hang on a minute, you know, think things are not too bad, and I went on a school camp with my daughter, and like, actually, that's pretty cool, and, and just all those little moments along the way, otherwise... 
you know, the, uh, I don't want to sound negative with this, but like, I, I am getting older. So yep. I actually, like, I think, I keep thinking to myself, you know, it's, I got, I got to accelerate these things along the way because, like, um, 40 came around real quick and, and 43's come around real, real quick and 50's going to come around real quick. So I've, let's enjoy the journey, you know? Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I, I'm really curious, mate, especially the world we live in now and the world that your, your kids are going to grow up in. You know, what are some core values or, or lessons you are teaching them now or, or will teach them as they get older? Yeah, mate, I've, I, I, th- I suppose in some regards, you know, kids are a product of their environment and, and you're, you're the biggest part of their environment. So at times they're going to perhaps mirror the, the things in, in that my me and my wife are into, but a bit of a non-negotiable for us is team sport. Like mm. it's just something that gave me pretty much everything really, to be honest. Like I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a particularly intelligent person. I wouldn't say that I've got a certain a set of skills that are really specific you know certainly you wouldn't want me doing your accounts or anything mate or you you know all that sort of stuff or um or you know representing your court or, or any of those really specific skills in life but like whatever skills I do have have come from being involved in in team environments and and working with a group of people to a common goal and and really enjoying that so I want my boys to have that and I want Evie my daughter to have that so I really encourage them to be involved um, in those types of environments, it, it means that they um, are not so individualistic, you know, like it's important to have self-confidence and be working on yourself all the time and have goals and actually be a little bit driven, like 100%, but also I want to be able to do that within a group setting. I want them to be able to communicate with um, and work together with people like themselves, but people mm. are not like themselves as well, make them realise that we don't all see eye to eye, but we can actually get stuff done if, if we have... Um, you know, a good rapport and a respectful and a good relationship. And like that, that is, I'm not even saying all that stuff because that's who I was, but that's what I want them to be. So, yep. so we get them into those environments and, and, um, I think, um, it's, it's probably the best thing that we can, um, do for our kids. Um, and then, you know, I, I heard a smart man say once, which has always stuck with me. It's funny how some things stick with you and some things don't. Um, but around, you know, he was quite a wealthy guy. He was a very successful guy. And he just said, you know, what's the best thing you do, can you do for your kids? And he, he was to say, just give them time. Mm. You know, and a really busy guy, really successful guy, does all sorts of stuff, but it's like, and it, the context was around, he's a wealthy guy. How do you make sure that his kids um, don't have a silver spoon and all that sort of stuff? And this is just one example, but he just said, spend time with them and and try and, you know, put the values into them that you think are going to help and and um, you can only do that by doing it yourself and spending time with them. And I thought, oh, that's good stuff. So we just, you know, I try and make sure that, you know, um, that I do spend time with my kids and I don't nail that all the time but 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 try hard to and, and um, you know, realise that, you know, we, we put a lot of things in the world on we want schools to do this and we, you know, like this is the job of a school. Like, God, half the time I reckon schools are meant to, you know, show kids how to make their lunch, drive a car. Like, they're just... Actually, the job is just to get them reading and writing, yeah. you know, predominantly. And then, and of course, there's all these other things that go with it, but that's their job. You know, like um, a lot of the other things that um, happens to our kids are a result of us, you know. So, um, you know, that's just, um, you know, I don't think it doesn't matter what the world's like. I don't think that stuff changes over from generation to generation, you know. Yeah, I love that, mate. And uh, re- revisiting what you said about your surroundings and who you surround yourself by, you know, it is really easy to think, oh, you know, this is just me being me because, you know, I'm, I'm my own person. But you yep. do become your surroundings, you know. You, oh, you, you hear people say all the time is, show me your five best friends and I'll show you the next five years. Yeah. And you don't realise that until you meet a bad, bad batch of friends and you're, yep. like, you're like, wow. Oh, totally. And, and like, you know, unfortunately, you know, a lot of influences these days are coming to people through chat groups and online groups and digital stuff. Yep. Um, and, and, you know, like that, that is... There's no getting away from that. That's how people are consuming things these days. But also, I think you know, um, you know, it's it's literally on the website. It's something we really champion is like spend time with uh, with people to make you feel good. And like kind of like you said before, we say things. Oh, that sounds quite easy. I oh, like I enjoy Hindo's company. You know, Carlos, all these people that we know mutually, Jay, etc. Um, you know, spend time with people to make you feel good. Um, well, it's actually quite hard. Like sometimes people have to be quite ruthless with that. Like if you've got people in your life who perhaps. Um, and not helping you go in the direction that you want to go and, uh, and uh, um, causing behaviours you're not happy about, uh, it's quite hard to cut them off yeah. um, or even not even cut them off but just minimise the time 
you spend with them, you know. So it's actually quite hard. So that's a big thing, I think, is like actually being um, pretty ruthless with who you spend all your time with and who you give your energy to. And and if you know if someone's um, you know if you're actually unhappy around someone um, and you're around them a lot, it's probably not a good thing, you know. Yeah, you have to be. You know, a lot of people don't like the word, but be self selfish for yourself sometimes. Ah, oh, totally. Um, and yeah, it is really hard. I'm, I'm actually going through. It's funny you say that. Going through that at the moment, you know, I've had yeah. childhood mates. I've been mates with since started yeah. primary school, and it's, we're getting to that age now where, you know, I enjoy their company, but it gets a bit too much now. Yeah. You don't want to come across like a douche saying, "No, bro, get out of my life." But yeah, minimizing your time. That's the exact way to say it, mate. Yeah. It's being quite ca- just cautious of your surroundings and how how your surroundings are making you feel. Yeah, it's, I yeah. think so. And as I said, it's all easier said than done. But um, and you got to be really honest with the people in your life around why that's the case, and, and that's really hard. But um, you know, the reality is you want to be in. And I always think in my situation, there are all sorts of different situations. Mine's different to yours. But I am, I am busy, like, and I'm willingly busy. So when you do, um, you know, have an opportunity to spend some time doing things you like, you might as well do it with people you like. You know, yeah. it's all going to be good fun, it's all going to be good stuff. But if you actually get a gap in life and you fill it with something rubbish, then, ah, uh, wow, that's, that's, you're going backwards quick there, aren't yeah. you? Good luck getting another gap in life. <laughs> totally. Now, mate, I'm, I'm going to put you on the spot a bit, but if the, imagine your life's like a, like a movie, like a montage, right? Mm. And you had one quote or one piece of advice to finish off the movie that you want to put out there into the universe, maybe to yourself or the future, maybe even your kids to look back on, or something you feel that the people back at home need to hear? What, what would that be? Oh, I don't know, so many. I mean, I think in terms of things, whether this is, is you know, the best thing in the world or not, I don't know, but I just thought, like, Grandad was a bit of a sort of, you know, someone in our family that we really respected. He's passed away these days and, and um, just a really good man from, a, from an old generation. And he just always used to say, you know, don't talk about yourself, let other people talk about you. You know, and that's that's that humility thing and... and and at times, you know, actually there are times when perhaps Kiwis take that a little bit too far and we're, we're uber humble. But, but that's something that's always stuck with me. You know, it's something I really um, talk about with the boys is like, you know, let other people talk about you and they're probably going to talk about you if you're a good young man and have good actions and, and um, show real integrity. Like, So that's always always stuck with me. But I think probably in terms, in a real Movember context, um, you know, I say at the end of every, every time I'm talking to people about Movember mm-hmm. in any way, shape or form, you know, I always say, um, you know, every single time and, and often finish with it is kind of like I said to you before, we, we see all these challenges when it comes to, broadly speaking, men's health, you know, and, and quite often the stuff that we see is all the bad stuff, you know, like things are going really, really badly, toxic masculinity, suicide, um, some of the things that people are being exposed to online, um, all these different challenges, and, and they're real, I'm not shying away from that stuff. But it almost, for a lot of people, it creates a sense of hopelessness. You know, yeah. like, oh, well, holy heck, how am I going to do anything about that? Like, these issues are significant. What what can I do? I can barely look after myself. How can I do anything about this? And I just always say, like, just think about the three or four people in your life who mean the most to you and focus on them. You know, so you probably start with yourself. You know, like, if you're in good nick, then you have the opportunity to help others. And getting yourself in good nick is often a big challenge. And just think about three other people, three or four other people that mean a lot to you. And sometimes... Yep, it can be best friends and it can be family members. Um, it, it could be a flatmate. It could be a high school best mate. Um, but it could be a colleague. You know, we spend, sometimes we spend 30, 40, 50 hours a week with a colleague, you know, and, and actually when we just sit back and re- we realise we're pretty close with them. So just think about those people. And if we all did that en masse, like if, if we all sort of adopted that philosophy and all looked out for each other, for the people that we actually spend a lot of time with, um, then we're winning. Then I think we do move the dial. And, and I actually think that's happening. Like, I, I genuinely do think that's happening. So I think we are in many cases, and sometimes it's intangible, I think we are really moving forward in that space. So that, that's the message I say to people are, around Movember is like, you know, just give a shit, shit about the people that really mean something mm. to you. And, and, you know, I was, you know, sometimes I don't practice what I preach. I preach a little bit and I, I try hard to, but like, there are so many blokes, you know, particularly at my age and stage, you know, groomsmen and best men at your wedding that you haven't talked to for three months, six months, 12 months, or, you know, though, in theory, you know, you gave those guys the big job at your wedding, then they mean a bit to you. Um, so just make sure you're connected with them. Um, and I think if we ordered that en masse, then then, then we are winning. Yeah. Um, yeah, so as I said, it's that layer down. We're actually, we're doing all the right things, um, but we've just got to sort of create that hope around it.
Beautiful, mate. What a what a wicked way to wrap it up, mate. <laughs> Thank you for your for your time around here, especially in the beautiful Auckland. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, the 09, yeah, man. Yeah, mate. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate you coming on. No, no worries, mate. Like, as I said, um, you know, I appreciate what you're doing here. Like, you're sort of, um, you know, you're out there having a crack and and um, actually um, there is a lot of people doing good stuff like you are. So um, if we all keep sort of staying the course, then, then I think we absolutely are making a difference. So good on you, brother, for having a go. Cheers, bro. Thank you. No worries. As always, guys, do what makes you happy, do what you know is right, and do what you need to do for you. Love you very much, love yourself, and I'll see you next week. See you later.